Okay, shalom dear Tommy Dean. This should be our last video of the day, assuming I can get all of this done in 10 minutes, and I think I can. We have seen the Gemara that says that somebody that doesn't that says Shema and doesn't wear his tefillin is compared to two things. Ula had said it's as if he didn't wear his is as if he's testifying falsely about himself. And Rabbi Yochanan had said it's as if he is giving a korban without its side pieces. And we had seen Rabbi Yona who had explained that what does it mean that it's as if he's testifying falsely? It's because he says in Shema that you should be wearing your tefillin and you're not. And we explained Rabbi Yochanan as saying that it's as if like giving it's like giving a korban, it's like not wearing your tefillin when you say Shema is like giving a korban and without its side things because it's almost, almost as if you've been Mechabal Machal Shemayim, but you haven't, right? Because you're not wearing your tefillin. And if you were really Mechabal Machal Shemayim, you'd be wearing your tefillin. So now we've got a couple of questions to think about. The first question is, hold on a second, overall, right, although yes, we've explained on a simple level, right, we can define, according to Rabbi Yono, what the issues are here, but what's the problem without saying, with saying Shema without your tefillin on, right? After all, the mitzvah is simply to say Shema, right? So that means reciting words. Yes, there's a kavana, right, to be makabah shemaim, but the, what difference does it make what you're wearing, right? That's our first question. What's the difference between what Ula and Rechi are saying? That's our second question. What's the difference between them? And hold on a second. It's a problem to say Shema without wearing my tefillin. But why isn't it a problem to wear my tefillin without saying Shema? Oh, and some people think that is a problem. So those are our three questions. If you missed them, they're on your sheets, which you should have printed. So that's, uh, so those are the three questions. What I'd like you to do now is pause this fancy schmancy video and before I get to the answers and send me your thoughts. You could take a long time to send me your thoughts, but I like them. And then what's going to happen on the rest of this video as we continue is I am going, well, you shouldn't pause yet. What I'm going to do is give you my thoughts and then you're going to sum those up. So what I'd like you to do is pause this video right now. And then I'd like you to send me your thoughts. I'd like you to label them my ideas. You can work on this with a chavrusa. The next piece you cannot. And, uh, and you could say this is from the following couple of people and this is what we came up with. Okay, and I'd like to hear that. But now I'd like you to pause the video and uh, I'm going to get to what I'm going to continue when I say now I'm continuing with my ideas. So send me your ideas now. Pause here. Okay, now let's go on. Okay, at this point I'm going to go give you my svaras and I want you to send those to me based on how well you understand them. So the first question we had is what's the problem with, with saying Shema without tefillin on? And right, I'm going to answer that along with the question of what's the difference between Ula and Rechia because I'm going to explain. I, I think that the problem of saying Shema without your tefillin on is different um, depending on whose opinion you're looking at. I think that Ula has one opinion what the problem is and Rechia has a different one which is why there's a machlokas here. Okay, so what are the two issues with saying Shema without putting your tefillin on? Right, so Ula had said that it's like testifying falsely against yourself, right? So, right, meaning that he has a mitzvah to say Shema, right? And he has a mitzvah, he's saying Shema, and he's saying that there is a mitzvah to say Shema without your tefillin on, right? And, uh, and you're not, right? So what's the problem there? So what I think he's saying is that the gavra, the person is lacking, right? He's done the mitzvah, he's done the mitzvah perfectly, right? But the person himself, right, he's focusing the attention not on the mitzvah of Shema. In other words, the problem, what's, what's lacking here, right? He said the words, he said, he said Shema, he's been Mechabah, Malchus, Shemaim, according to Ula. Everything is perfect. So he says, okay, what did I do wrong here? Why are you giving me that look, Ula? So Ula says, well, hold on a second, where are, you, where are your tefillin? He says, what do you mean, where's my tefillin? Why do I have to wear my tefillin? So show me where in Hilchos Kriya Shema it says you have to wear your tefillin. And Ula's going to go through all the laws of Kriya Shema, and it's not going to say it. But Ula's going to say that it doesn't matter. It's still problematic because you are lacking. You are saying Shema. Yes, you filled the mitzvah of Shema perfectly. You've done exactly what you're supposed to do. The Shema requires you to say words. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. That's the mitzvah. And you've done the mitzvah. But there's a problem. The Gavra, when he says Shema, the person, right, has to have a full benefit from the mitzvah. And the mitzvah of Shema is, is, is said completely when you're wearing your tefillin on. Oh, you'll ask me what about at night, right? You'll say at night, different problem. If you get this point, you get this point. If not, if not, since tefillin aren't obligated at night, when you say the mitzvah, 
it doesn't matter. You don't have to. You don't have to have your tefillin on because when you recite the mitzvah, you're saying the mitzvah with the knowledge. It's not on at night. If you caught that, great. If you didn't, didn't. I just wanted to push off the question to anyone that had it. But Shema in its full capacity, saying Shema in the right way, is with the mitzvahs that are mentioned. Right? That's the best way of doing it. So the best way of saying Shema is with your tefillin on because you're saying there's a mitzvah of tefillin. So you yourself are lacking as an individual. According to Rabbi Yona, Rabbi Chia has a completely different approach. Rabbi Chia says it's a problem in the mitzvah itself. This has nothing to do with you. Oh, you want me to show you in Hilchos, tefillin, in Hilchos Shema where it says you have to have your tefillin on? Right? Or in his saying, of, of, in his laws of Shema, he's going to add in. Rabbi Yochan's going to add in that Shema must be said with your tefillin on. You have to have tefillin on when you say Shema. He sees it as part and parcel of the mitzvah. Why? Because that's what Kabbal Salmachul Shemaim is. Kabbal Salmachul Shemaim isn't just an idea where I say that I'm going to accept Hashem as my God. There are requirements and, con- and responsibilities that come with accepting Hashem as your God. And one of them is wearing tefillin. Tefillin is such an important mitzvah that to say Shema and say, oh, I'm going to be with Kabbal Salmachul Shemaim, but to not actually wear- be wearing a tefillin when you say that, that's highly problematic. And that's the difference. So let's go over the differences again. Rabbi Ula, Ula says that the problem is that it's if, of saying Shema without your tefillin on is as if you're testifying falsely because that's a problem in you as the individual. Yes, Shema, you don't need your tefillin on. You don't need your tefillin on to fulfill the mitzvah of Shema, but you yourself are lacking. So it's a problem. Did you get the check mark for saying Shema? Yes. Are you yourself a perfected individual for saying Shema? No, because you didn't say it properly. Rabbi Chia says, no, no, what did we learn from Rabbi Yochanan? He says, what we learned from Rabbi Yochanan is the fact that Shema requires Kabbal Salmachu Shemayim. And a full Kabbal Salmachu Shemayim requires you to have your tefillin on. It's a full unit. And that's what he's going to explain. So that's the difference between Ua and Rabbi Chia. Now, is there a problem of wearing, why isn't there a problem of wearing tefillin without saying Shema? So according to Ua, right, because there's nothing that you say when you're putting on your tefillin, there's nothing that says, I have to say Shema, right? According to Ula, who felt that there's a lack in the gavra on the person who says Shema without his tefillin on, right? There's nothing in tefillin that says you have to be Makabal Shemaim. They have nothing to do with each other from the tefillin aspect of it, right? From the Shema aspect, yes, there is. And according to Rabbi of course there's no problem because the mitzvah of tefillin doesn't require Shema. But the mitzvah of Shema requires tefillin. Okay, if you didn't